The Chester Historical Society's Museum at the Mill is a step back in time for exploring over 300 years of Chester history. Every time I come here, I'm always amazed that something new has been added to the collection or I rediscover something that was overlooked on my last visit. As one wanders through the museum exhibits, some items on display help us to understand a moment in time, while others, no matter how seemingly insignificant, tell us a story. It is these items, those that tell us a story, that are the treasures of the collection. One exhibit that fascinates me is, is on shipbuilding. Chester's history of shipbuilding stretches back to the decades following settlement. Field statistics tell us that shipbuilding began as early as 1755 at the head of the cove. Most residents of Chester do not realize that the beautiful marsh we see as we travel along Water Street was once an open cove where ships would enter what we know today as Chester Center. Prior to the building of Denison's Bridge in 1816, near the intersections of Route 148 and 154, this wide open waterway allowed for a bustling West Indies trade to take place. Ships laden with cattle, sheep, pigs, poultry, clabberts, onions, apples, and corn journeyed to the islands of the Caribbean. Return cargoes would include sugar, molasses, rum, wine, tropical fruits, and the occasional slave. One old record shows a cargo from the schooner Nancy built in Pataconk and owned by Joel Canfield and Jonathan Warner, with Willoughby lined as master, giving her cargo from the Indies as principally salt, rum, sugar, sheepskin, and oranges. Yet each time I stop to ponder this exhibit, my eyes are drawn to the small section of a wharf, a bumper of sorts, to absorb the shock of the ship hitting against the wharf, preventing damage to the vessel. The piece, this piece was discovered in the 1970s when work to install a tank took place behind the town office building, which at the time was located on Main Street at the foot of Maple. It is this simple piece of wood that tells us the story of Chester and the wharf that once stood here. Most do not realize that Chester once had a thriving shipbuilding industry. Records indicate that the first ships were built at the head of the cove. Historical records tell us of a shipbuilding yard known as Dunk's Landing, or the Old Shipyard, that was located at the intersection of East Liberty Street and Water Street. We know the building yard was owned by William Buck and Gideon Leet, and later by Pardon Stevens and Samuel Colt. One can just imagine the hive of activity that went on as the sawmills hummed, the iron foundries pounded out chain and anchor, and the building yards built a schooner, schooners for West Indies trade. No images exist of Chester building yards, but these images of Deep River and Essex give us a good picture of the work that went on to produce these seafaring vessels. Today, as we walk through Chester, we can still see the legacy of our shipbuilding past. William Buck built this magnificent stone store in 1809. Buck, being actively engaged in West Indies trade, set himself up with a general store and most likely a ship chandlery. The stone for this building is believed to have come from a quarry behind the Catholic cemetery. Ever wonder why the building does not face down Main Street? It's because the building was, was focused on the cove so all incoming ships would see it. As we move down Main Street, we see Samuel Colt's house. Our shipbuilder and merchant built a fine home in 1790, making it one of the oldest houses in Chester. This house rena remained in the Colt family until 1912. Next to this house, to the east, would have been our wharf, where our fender was found. One can imagine the hustling business of goods coming and going from the West Indies. Across the street stands today another testament to our shipbuilding days. Known as Colt's Store in the early 1800s, it was built by Samuel Colt and Pardon Stevens. Interestingly, one of the former owners of the building made note that the supporting columns on the main floor, which go to the basement, are repurposed ship's masts. This general store and West Indy storehouse, like William Buck's Stone Store, stands as a living link to a town once active in shipbuilding trade. As I look out at our shipbuilding exhibit at the museum and the mill and focus on the single, this single piece of wood, I wonder, 
I wonder if the Alonzo, a sloop built in Chester in 1794, rubbed against our fender, or if the Chester, a sloop of 57 tons built at Dung's Landing, unloaded her cargo here, or if our fender was able to withstand the pressure of the Diana, the largest sloop built in Chester in 1815. As I mentioned earlier, sometimes the simplest of objects in the collection tell us the best stories. Our wharf's fender tells us of the rich shipbuilding history that helped to make the town we know today, and of the West Indies trade that built the fortune seen in some of our landmark buildings. Make a point in the future to visit the Museum at the Mill, where the Chester Historical Society houses so many treasures big and small.